So this is a very important question for you as Okay, It's a bit of a gotcha question, but it's going to provide you some value. Now, we've got a dude who has HIV AIDS, as we can infer from his IV drug use history, difficulty breathing, and a fever plus a chest x-ray. We say, okay, this is pneumonia. The reason I say this is a gotcha question is because most students who uh, contemplate the idea of HIV AIDS plus pneumonia are going to be like, oh my god, pneumocystis gerovecci pneumonia. It's not. Chill the fuck out for two seconds. And the reason is because this chest x-ray is showing us right lower lobe consolidation. Okay? This is a gotcha question because pneumocystis gerovecci, PJP, is a bilateral ground glass pneumonia. This is high yield for USMLE. So you're, before I even get into the rest of the answer choices, just your take-home point is going to be that if you have a pneumonia in an immunocompromised patient that's low bar, strep pneumo is the most common pathogen, okay? Immunocompetent or immunocompromised, doesn't matter. If you have a low bar pneumonia, strep pneumo is most common, okay? Yes, you can have staph aureus. Yes, there can be exceptions. There's lots of different pathogens, but strep pneumo is most common. If you're immunocompromised and you have a bilateral ground glass pneumonia, yes, that's pneumocystis gerovecci pneumonia, most always. Atypical pneumonias, such as mycoplasma, can be bilateral, okay? They usually are bilateral, in fact. So you say, well, how am I supposed to differentiate mycoplasma from pneumocystis gerovecci? Like, wouldn't mycoplasma be more common? Yeah, it would be. But for USMLE, what they're going to do is just one of two things. It's just low bar pneumonia, immunocompromised patient, answer strep pneumo, not pneumocystis, bilateral ground glass pneumonia, immunocompromised patient, pneumocystis gerovecci. It's not going to be mycoplasma unless they tell you something like the patient has positive cold agglutinins. Okay, you say, what the fuck does that mean? Cold agglutinins refers to uh, IgM antibodies uh, against RBCs, cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. That's classic with mycoplasma, CMV in particular. So if they gave you that scenario, then yes, that's a giveaway for mycoplasma, okay? that's it's They would do something along those lines. Uh, so this is strep pneumo, and that's going to be gram-positive diplococci. So this is important because we don't want you to confuse gram-negative diplococci, which is naeseria, gana, gonorrhea, and meningitis, okay? So... Uh, gonococcal infections and meningococcal infections, gram-negative diplococci, whereas strep pneumo is gram-positive diplococci. Cysts on silver stain would be consistent with pneumocystis gerovecci. We would do a bronchoalveolar lavage, which is we squirt some sterile fluid down into the lungs, we aspirate it up, and then uh, we stain it with silver or toluidine blue, and we would see those cysts. That's pneumocystis. That would be if we, we had a bilateral ground glass pneumonia here. Uh, the gram-negative rods could be many things, okay? Uh, tons of gram-negative rods. So uh, bacteroides would be anaerobic infections, aspiration pneumonia. Uh, you would have extremely foul-smelling sputum, okay? Klebsiella, a gram-negative rod that could um, be seen with alcoholics or aspiration as well. Current jelly sputum, thick mucoid colonies. Klebsiella can also cause cavitations in the lungs. But... Um, also, pseudomonas, that's a gram-negative rod, okay, so cystic fibrosis after the first decade of life. Uh, in the first decade of life, staph aureus exceeds pseudomonas for, um, for cystic fibrosis. So gram-negative rods in general, I'm thinking of many, but we've got Klebsiella, we've got E. coli, Citrobacter, Serratia, we've got, uh, I said, pseudomonas, there's also Vibrio, we've got Salmonella, Shigella, Proteus, H. pylori, we've got Campylobacter. Uh, we've got bacteroides, so we've got uh, we've got Yersinia, we've got many. Uh, obviously, all those don't cause lung infections, and there's a lot we can talk about. But I want to stay fucking concise, okay? I know you don't want to see a 19-minute clip here. And then gram-positive filamentous rods uh, refers to both nicardia and actinomyces. So nicardia uh, would be weakly acid fast aerobic, and then actinomyces being uh, anaerobic and not acid fast. 
a lot we can talk about, okay? I could literally do a whole microbiology presentation over 90 minutes. We discuss all the fun and fancy details, but we need to keep these questions concise, all right? Obviously, I'm gonna make more content. So your take home point here is in an immunocompromised patient, strep pneumo is the answer. If you have a lobar pneumonia, it'll be pneumocystis uh, gerovecchi if you have a bilateral pneumonia, okay? Um, so that's your take-home point. U.S. Simile really, really likes that. Not complicated, not dramatic, okay? And that's just some clean, concise value for you. That's it.